Right. Center of gravity, please, wait up there. I'll do it after this. Yeah. Okay, got the title? Okay, so. So firstly, center of gravity. So actually, you all kind of have an idea of center of gravity already, you know what people? Like center of gravity, you've all tried I've tried to do this before. It's like a balancing point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have a rough idea in your head what it is. Anyway, what's the definition of it? Well, the center of gravity mm -hmm. of an object is the single point to which the full weight of a body appears to act. Mm -hmm. There you go. Just the definition is enough. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, center of gravity. So to put it simple, it's where the full uh, weight force vector acts. Um, another way to think of center of gravity is like the average point. So actually, I'm just uh, well, I have some pictures coming up, but just so I can draw some here. Come on, little pen. So when you have your mass, the center of gravity is basically where you draw your weight vector. So you feel like, yeah, I should draw it here, and if I have a, if I have a mass, it's, I shouldn't draw it, where could I put it? Like, that would be silly, wouldn't it? That's not quite, that doesn't feel right, does it? So, the center of gravity is where the weight acts. And does anybody remember the other verb for act or push? I gave to you yesterday. Mm -hmm. Exert, yeah. Anyway, back to the slides. So look, here's three examples. So you see here, uh, in the first one, uh, you don't need to draw this. Uh, the first one, his center of gravity is higher. Why? Well, because there's a boy on his shoulder. So there's more mass up here. So it moves the point higher. His center of gravity is not in the middle, it's to the left. Why is that? Because he has the bag, which is moving his centre to the left. Does this make sense? Mm. Yes. Yeah. And where is this, uh, in the centre, she's leaning back a little bit with her books, but she just is in the centre. Anyway, of the three people, who do you think is the most likely to fall? Uh, who, who looks like they could fall? Uh, mm. uh, well, you think the first one, hey? I don't know, I think the man just write the A. Okay? Think about this. What if the boy was really fat? Would this make it even higher or lower? Well, make it even higher. So, what I'm trying to get you to see is the higher the point is, the easier it is for the person to fall. Okay? So, um, he's okay. He's not too likely to fall, although he might fall to... To the side. Huh? Maybe bend a bit, yeah. But this person's likely to fall. And why? Well, we all know why now. Because the center of gravity is the highest. Okay. So I have more pictures. Lots of pictures today. Uh, now, um, 
Fulcrum is another word for turning point. And I'm very sorry to tell you this, this is not the same turning point as max class. Okay. Uh, and another word for turning point is pivot, and it's the point which the object turns. So look, let me make it simple for you. Look here, look. You see this here? This is called a fulcrum. Or another name is turning point. Or another name is pivot. So you have uh, three words for this. Yes? Well, what, what did you use in physics? Fulcrum or turning point or pivot? Fulcrum or pivot? Not never turning point, no? No, okay. Which one? Yeah. Not turn point, yeah. I was trying to simplify the English here. You got what I mean, though, yeah? Okay. If something moves or turns or Yes. Uh, click on the door. The door, what do you call it? That's actually called the hinge of the door. Hinge. Yeah. That's the noun for that particular device. Hinge, yeah. Hinge or hinge? H-I-N-G-E. Okay, can I go on? Yes. So, for example, the hinge on the door, which I just showed you. You don't need to write an example, Sam. The examples are hard to picture it, okay? So, look, the hinge on the door, that's one example of a fulcrum. Uh, the center of a seesaw. You know a seesaw that the children play on? Seesaw? Yeah, that the children play on in the park. They go up, down, up, down. You know this one? Yeah. I do, don't you? Yeah. No? Yeah. I'll draw it for you. <laughs> and look. Seesaw. The go up and down. You know this kind? <laughs> okay. Uh, the wheels actually uh, between the car and the road is a turning point. And you know it's definitely a turning point when the car goes too fast and it falls. You know those big SUVs? What happens if they go too fast around the corner? Yep, so it's turning, just like the door is. Yeah, but it's turning, and then it's upside down. Uh, your foot on the ground is another turning point, because if you think about it, when you put your foot down, you kind of turn on it. You know, you don't walk like this, you turn on it. There is a turning to it. With an angle. Huh? With a high angle though, yeah. Okay, so this one here. Her center gravity, high or low? Low. High. High, why? Well, she's upside down. Yeah? Left. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Heavy. Her legs are very heavy because she's a ballerina. Mm -hmm. Is she likely to fall? Yeah. Yeah, she's likely to fall for two reasons. Her center of gravity is high, and what else? Look at the turning point, the fulcrum. Mm. What's the fulcrum here? What's the turning point? Yeah. Uh -huh. Her hand. And what's the problem with her hands that makes it likely for her to fall? Uh, they're not well, simply, they're small. Mm. Okay, so the base. the base is small. The base is small, the center of gravity is high, so if you look at the top, that is very unstable. Very unstable. Okay? Notice how the center of gravity is above the turning point, and the base, per hand, are small. Got it? Okay. So she could easily fall. Right, next one. Coffee cup. Uh, this is unstable because it could fall. But what's different for this picture? Uh, the center of gravity is still above the turning point. But what's different that makes it more stable, but still unstable? The base is bigger. Yeah. But the center of gravity is still above the turning point. So no. Huh? Yes, like this. So they are unstable. Well, maybe they have extra support. Yeah. They would need it. Um, okay, the next picture. 
Uh, this one, I don't know if you remember this toy as a child. Did, have you, I used to have this, no not that one, I used to have this in elementary school. Can't, I'll have to make the picture bigger. Uh, nobody remembers this toy from school. Yeah, you remember it? So it's a little bird, and the bird's beak, you put it on your finger and it balances. You remember this, yeah? Can you see the bird is on the person's finger? Yeah. So, the toy company made this bird so that the bird's center of gravity is at its beak. Yeah. So, do you remember um, you were trying to balance the pen? on your finger like this. They made this bird so that the center of gravity is actually on the peak, uh, on the beak. So that means when you put the beak on your finger, it balances, just like you can do it with the hand. Yeah, you, so you, you've not seen this before, all right. Uh, I saw it on TV before in the TV. You saw it on TV? <laughs> yeah, you never had one? Mm. No. No, you had it, no. No, okay. Anyway, this one here is called neutral because the center of gravity is at the turning point. Okay, so maybe uh, you should note that neutral means the center of gravity is at the turning point. So the turning point now is the finger, right? Yeah, the beak on the finger is the turning point. Yeah. So should this be stable or unstable? Well, it's neither, because it's balanced. Yeah, if you give it a little force, it should not fall. But if you give it enough force, it probably will fall. Okay, can I continue? Yeah? Right. Now this one here is our first example of stable. So look, here is the turning point, yes? but its center of gravity is under the turning point. This means he's stable. So think about it. He's hanging here, look, and if you push him, he just goes back. He doesn't, doesn't fall, really. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he could fall here because the base is small, his hands. But if he gets hit by force, he should be okay. So here we say it's stable because the centre of gravity is below the turning point. Yeah? Okay. And then the last one here is um, going to be very stable. So the cap door. Mm. The cap door is very stable because the centre of gravity is below the turning point. So I'm like, sorry, my problem is, but this is like the door. The centre of gravity is here and the turning point is here. So it's stable, you know, if you push it, it just goes back. And also the base is very big. You know, it's not like the door was like this, and it could break off. So it's got a big base, and the center of gravity is under the turning point, so it's very stable. Yeah? So the uh, turning point yeah? is uh, above the center of gravity. Center of gravity. Yeah. Very stable. It's stable, yeah. And all it is the all stable, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we talked about that one. Okay, can I go on? Yeah. Okay, so a little bit now of more definitions. So when we talk about uh, the moment of a force, that's the force times the distance to the fulcrum or the, the turning point. So it's basically a turning force. And another word for it is moment or torque. Mm -hmm. And you have a formula for it here. So there's a lot to write down there. Uh, and there are the units, Newton meters. But anyway, it's one bit at a time. So this is what we have first. This is called the moment. Or uh, I sometimes call it turning force. So wait, just before you write this down, just, I'll leave it, don't worry, there's no rush, I'll leave it here. Look, so this force is vertical, this force is horizontal, and then now what we're going to look at now is a turning force. 
This is called a moment or a torque. Is a turning force. Yeah. Okay. So now you can write the definition down. Oh, sorry, my sentence is messed up. I said out of the formula, another word is, okay, so uh, the last two sentences you need to swap. I should have said another word is moment of torque, out of formula, it's fast. Sometimes you might see a J, a tau, or a gamma. Uh, I haven't decided which one I like, so I'm going to stick with L. You don't need to write that. I'll stick with using L. Yeah? What? Okay, I can continue? Yeah? Okay. So, what this force measures is how much force there is trying to make something turn. A big moment means there's a lot of force trying to turn an object. So that's what I mean by a big moment. Lots of turning force. Okay, let's have a look at our first example. I'll draw it for you. Uh, so what's happening here is... Um, where's my pen? Oh, here it is. Which is the new pen and which is the old pen? I think this looks nice and clean, so this must be the new pen. Right, so a man is trying to freeze his car, and his car is trapped. So he tries to free it by using a big, long metal pole. What do you mean by free? Like it's stuck in mud, so he's trying to get it free. Uh, move it from the mud. Oh, good! Oh, okay. Yeah, um, uh, 20 centimeters. Okay, so let me just try and draw this here for you. So here's the car. 
it's a car that's terrible and it's stuck in some mud and what he does is he goes okay I'll put a, I'll put a brick here and I'll put um, I'll put some steel here and uh, what else do I say oh yeah and so he's going to put a force here and I think this distance is 2.2 meters um, yeah and then this distance here is 0 0.2 so just to be clear that 2.2 that's whoops that 2.2 is the total distance and then that 0 0.2 is the distance from the car to the what's this called okay. what's this point called no fulcrum turning point fulcrum okay so my question is how much turning force is there well what's the formula for turning force turning force or moment is force multiplied distance oh yeah I'm sorry in the question I say the force is one kilo newton one thousand newtons of force okay so how big is the force oh, well I just said it there how big is it one thousand now here's the big question I want people to think about don't say anything just yet I want the distance so the way I see it there are three possible answers for distance either 2.2 or 0 0.2 or 2 because there's three distances the total the big distance and the small distance which one do you think what do we think all right so um ten yes. you're saying two zero point two two point two two point two two and don't know the answer is two because remember it's the distance from the force to the turning point the fulcrum so if you look here here is the force I'm oh sorry here is the force and here is the distance yeah so here is this here is a 2 so the answer is 2000 newton meters remember like in my example with the door it's the force that I'm doing it with times the distance so that would be get okay, what? Well, it's 2 meters from the force to the turning point uh -huh, okay. Amanda, is that okay? Or not okay? I forget the question. Okay. The question is calculate the turning force at the moment. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Can you show me the question? Sure. Um uh. Yeah. Are you sure it's okay? Yeah. Okay. I can continue? Yeah. So, do uh, you know what a wrench is? No. You know what a wrench is? Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to draw it. Um, I'll try and draw a wrench, my goodness. Um, uh, um, whew. <laughs> yeah, it's not so bad. <laughs> and you use it to um, tighten yeah. screws. Okay. 
So my question is, the wrench is 20 centimeters long, and the force being used, to, uh, is the nut is 100 newtons. What's the moment? Okay, so what I'm saying here is, uh, the, sorry, what did I say? 20 centimeters long, wasn't it? Yeah, and 100 newtons, okay. So. Here to here is 20 centimeters. And then the force in my hand, oh, where's my, oh, here it is. The force here is 100 newtons. Okay, so what is the turning force here? The moment, what's that? It will be 100 multiplied by 20. 0.20, which is 20 newton meters. Okay? Let's change it to meters. meters. Yeah. Okay, did you get that? So here's my question about the wrench. The answer will not be 20 though. Really, the answer will be less than 20. Why is that? Who can give me the reason why it will be less than 20? It's to do with the space, yeah. That 20 centimeters, can you look? Oops, where's my pen gone? Oh, that's... Uh, greens, okay. That 20 centimeters, look is from here whoops, to here but really I should be using from here to here so it's never going to be fully 20 because as you said perhaps there's like a little bit of a distance here extra space I'm not using but you know it's roughly 20 is that the door? Yeah. Hey, you're back from the bank. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, can I go on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we'll do, no, no, this is just a question. Uh, so I'll draw this for you. Do you know what wheelbarrow is? Yes. Yeah, I'll draw it for you. It's 40 centimeters long and the handles are 20. So 40 and 20. 20. Okay, I'll try and draw it. Um. That's a wheelbarrow. Okay. Uh, and I say here this is 40 centimeters and this is 20 centimeters. Um, and what else do I need to tell you? Oh yeah, and I tell you there's a hundred kilograms in the wheelbarrow. Draw the diagram. Nailed it. Um, right, so there's a man coming along here and he, you know what he's going to do, he's going to lift it up here with force F. Although there's another force as well, what's that? Uh, there's a weight here, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. And that would be 100 G. G. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, for this question here, what's the turning point? Uh, yeah. So, what? Where? Where is the point? Where is the turning point? The You're saying the wheel? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and, uh, no, 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 no. Where is it on the wheelbarrow? Just find me. Where? The wheel, yeah? Yeah. 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 About the wheel, yeah? What about you? KJ? Yeah. The wheel? Yeah. So this is the interesting thing, which we'll see more about in the next class. Isn't that? Uh-huh. Isn't that? No, no. In fact, it doesn't really matter where you draw the turning point on the diagram, you still get the same answer. This might seem very confusing, and in a later lesson we'll talk more about it. But for the moment, it might seem like, okay, I should put the uh, 
turning point, I should say, by somewhere, where's my pen gone? Somewhere here at the wheel, shouldn't I? Because the wheelbarrow then turns up like this. So if I draw it here, what would be the turning force? It would be the weight multiplied the distance. That's 100 times 9.81. And what's the distance? 40. No. Anybody know? Uh, yeah. 20. Good, but no. You want? Did you do 30? Good. No. No. Zero. Why? Because, look, see the force? Mm -hmm. The force goes through the turning point. There is no, um, there's no distance. It's like this. It's like if my force was here. There's no distance. I am the other force. I am firstly for the weight, then I'll look at the other one. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah? No. No. No, no, you said 20. Yeah. That's also okay. But if you say 20, that means um, you're putting the turning point as here, which is also fine. So then it would be 20. So for your one, it would be 0 0.2 multiply 100 multiply 9.81. And that's okay also. Now people aren't happy with this. Uh, this is because it seems very difficult that you can choose where to put the turning point. That it seems like the turning point should only be at one place where it turns. But uh, mathematically, it doesn't need to be. It can be located anywhere. As long as you use the same point for the rest of the question. It's a bit like the origin. You can put the origin anywhere. We usually put the origin where? Mm -hmm. The center, where the object starts. Although we can put it anywhere. Yeah? Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to... No, I think I'm going to delete this question. I, I made this question last night and I was thinking, oh, this will be a great question. And now I'm thinking, no, it's too difficult. So uh, we'll, just, we'll just forget about this you example. Don't think it's short, though, right? Well, let me see if it's. Yeah, too difficult. What was I thinking? <laughs> uh, let me just have a look at my examples to make sure. Oh. No, no, this is good. This is good. Okay. My examples are okay. Uh, I mean, sorry, my questions are okay. This was too difficult. Let's just delete that. I've got to make a note of that. Kill wheel barrel. All right. Um, okay, so what we'll do is um, take a picture of this uh, and then take a very quick break just if you need to go to the toilet or whatever. Then we'll do the tutorial and the next topic. Okay? Tutorial next Yeah. Yeah. So if you need to go to the bathroom or whatever, I'll give you five minutes and then we're going straight into the tutorial. Did you take a picture of this? You can post them, right? I'll post them as well, yeah. But just in case you cannot access Moodle because you forgot your date of birth, mm -hmm. then you can have a picture to look at. You'll be surprised. Yeah. 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 For this? Mm, no. For what? Um. For last night? No, 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 this question. Oh sure, but I I I killed it, so don't worry about it. <laughs>